Okay, another video featuring the amazing NVIDIA DGX Spark that NVIDIA sent me. However, you could really do this video, this material on just about any setup. What I'm going to do is set up an Olama server that I can use locally. An Olama server is going to let me be able to run large language models locally here at my house that I can make use of on other computers. I'll be developing large language models on my Macintosh and I will want to run local models for certain things. If I'm running something uncensored or if I just want to use a specialized model. So I'm going to be using the DGX Spark for this a lot in my own personal use. It's got 128 gigabytes of unified RAM so it can run some 70 billion parameter models and and beyond. We're going I'll do this in another video. I'm going to look at how big of a of a large language model can you actually run on this device, balancing context window size and all all that sort of fun stuff. But this video is about how to set up an Olama server and access it remotely. So what I am doing here is I am using these very, very handy DGX Spark notebooks that NVIDIA provides. Now you could do this with just about any Unix system. So I'm gonna put the links to all of this in the video's description. But let's go ahead and look at their notebook or their workbook, I should say, on how to set up web UI with Olama. What's nice about doing this through web UI is you do get a fairly decent user interface. And that will let you experiment with these models before you go off and try to access them through APIs using Python. All right, so we're going to go to the actual instructions and it's asking you to get, to, to make use of Docker. So. I am gonna go and connect to the DGX Spark. I could be using its user interface through Ubuntu, but let's let's just do this. So I'm going to do, that is the IP address that I have assigned it to. And that's my user ID. All right, you'll see that I am now logged into that using a certificate that I set up previously. But here I am on it, it's giving me the stats on it. NVIDIA, the GPU is all set up already can run NVIDIA SMI that scrolled off um, somewhat unfortunately, but that is, that gives you, there's there's not much running on it. You can see there's some user interface things because we I do have it running connected to a monitor so I can use it locally if I should, should desire. But they say run Docker PS. This is just proving that you can access Docker. If you have to do pseudo Docker, that works too, but it just means you're you haven't set up your your user to be part of the Docker group. So let's see what the next command they want me to run here. We're going to do this all in Docker, so that keeps it all nice and self-contained. And they say th this is if you wanted to add your user to to the Docker group, you don't necessarily have to do this. This line is quite important. This is where we are going to pull the web UI. Docker image that they've, that they've created. So got that copied. And then we're just going to run that on the Spark. Don't run it locally, unless you're literally on the machine that's going to be your server. So we run that, it's gonna pull all of that. I have this wired gigabit ethernet, so this should go pretty darn quick. Okay, it's installed. I did fast forward through that just a bit. Now that we pulled it, we need to start it up. And they give you the fairly lengthy command here. This is basically just setting up a couple of volumes that it will create. This is where your models will be downloaded to. So be aware, it's gonna create some fat Docker volumes to hold these large language models. And they don't call them large language models for nothing. So we'll copy that. Go back to the command prompt and we shall paste this in. And you see that lengthy hash there shows you it is up and running. So let's go ahead and make use of it. You get to it through 8080, the port, on your local host. Now, I'm not on the local host. I, am, I was installing this on the Spark, but uh, the machine you're actually looking at right now is my Mac. So let's pop it back here to the browser and open that up. And there you see the address of that.
go ahead and hit that. And you can see it is, it is remembering me from a previous login. So I don't think I completely killed my volume that holds this information, but if it's your first time, it would basically just ask you for this information. So I'm just gonna log in and it logs you in. It does the usual what's new, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let's go. So you can see one of the models that I pulled previously was the DeepSeq R0170 billion parameter model. So we're not gonna go through and download that again. If you wanna add these though, if you're, if you're literally in this for your first time, then you just, you basically do a search and you select that. You can see I have a couple of them in here. I have GPT, open source, um, all, all of these. You can ask it a question. The hello world always seems to be, what is the capital? What is the capital of France? And it submits that to this local 70 billion parameter model that is running. You can see I also have a, a, a 20 billion parameter model as well. Now you, you do need to balance this with how big of context inputs you are going to be sending this. All right, you can see it giving the results here and I'll show you the relative speed that this is coming through as well. Now this is a large model for, for this machine. Uh, so you, you can see that coming in. I'm gonna do another video just on looking at different sized models. Uh, let me know if you're interested in that in the, in the comments for sure. But yeah, this is where in the prompt you'd wanna say, just, just give me the answer and no additional post amble. So there it is. So this is the project that you'll want to clone. There's not a lot here. It basically just shows you how to get the client set up, uh, the requirements and build a virtual environment. This terminal is on my Spark. So we need a different terminal here. This is on my local Mac. So we just move into that directory. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my virtual environment just so that I create it for you. But now you, now you don't have that. My readme describes how to do that. So you're basically just going to use each of these commands that I give you here. Make the virtual environment, activate the virtual environment. If you're on Windows, this is a slightly different command. I'll put it in into the video in post-production. And then we want to install the requirements and the requirements is just OpenAI. I'm going directly to it. No PySpy, no, no Langchain, just right to it. And I should mention, Olama uses the OpenAI API format. So it, it looks like I'm connecting to OpenAI, but I'm really not, I'm connecting locally. And we'll see what that looks like here in just a second. So now the virtual environment is active. I can see the chat PY that I'm going to want to run before I, let's go ahead and run it first. All right, what you wanna to do to get that API key is go into Jeff Heaton or whoever you are, go into this. And then it's a little weird that a lot of these are grayed out. I don't know what's going on there, but you wanna go down here to account and then API keys. It will have created one initially. You just do show and it shows you what that API key is. And I could copy and paste it. And that's just what you have to put into that environmental variable. Or if you like playing risky, you can just paste it right into the text of the prompt. Okay, and now we will run this and you can see the result actually comes back really pretty quickly. And there's really nothing that special about the, the, the program. I put it so that you have the server URL. That's whatever your local server is. And the API key comes from the environmental variable. I was using the 20 billion parameter model there. That's just the default. You have to have loaded that model. If you haven't loaded the model into the, the web UI previously, you're not going to see it here. You'll get a model unknown. So make sure you play with the model a bit on the, the UI. Then we just build a normal open AI 
endpoint and we get get the result. We send off the, the request and receive the results. So that is how I set up a basic web server just for local home use. If you want to do something in a high capacity production sort of environment, you'll probably want to use something different than this, but just for local at home use, it's all you, compatible with OpenAI, which is what you're going to typically use with Llama, even in a more advanced situation. So this is a great start. I'm going to have more videos using the DGX Spark and other large language models. So please subscribe to the channel and give the video a like if this was helpful. Thank you so much.